recording. Oh. <laughs> they are recording. Anyone that comes here doesn't survive. Ah. Stephen will just that, will just put them in the family way ah. and send them home. Did you check this phone? Hmm? Mm -mm. phone is off. What happened? Yeah, don't worry. He's coming live, so we are going to. <coughs> Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Another wonderful day. It's a Wednesday and uh, we're hoping that you have woken up uh, nice and uh, today is going to be a wonderful day. On the program today, we're going to be looking at the fact that oil producers have rejected the mandate to sell crude oil to local refineries. Uh, that's really worrisome. We're going to be dealing with that later on on the show. And then we're going to be looking at telling the Nigerian story through theatre. Nobody else can tell our stories more than we uh, can. So we'll be listening to a, an investment um, banker turned uh, theatre producer uh, that will be talking to us what this has done, how, how telling our stories through theatre has uh, fared so far and how it can help us uh, really uh, put uh, Nigeria on the international map in a positive way. Okay, we're going to also be looking at the papers today. Let's see what headlines made it to the front pages of our national dailies. And then we'll be taking our top trending stories for today. In the meantime, uh, let's just take the quote of the day. Our quote of the day is from Tony Robbins and it says, the higher your energy level, the more efficient your body, the more efficient your body, the better you feel and the more you will use your talents to produce outstanding results. That's by Tony Robbins. The higher your energy level, the more efficient your body, the more efficient your body, the better you feel and the more you will use your talent to produce outstanding results. So just simply ask yourself this morning, what is your energy level like? What, how much energy are you putting into whatever you're going to do? Like they say, talent is, in, is not enough. You need that, uh, uh, what Nigerians will call ginger. You need the ginger spirit. That's, has, that's the energy we're talking about. We're not talking about taking energy drinks, no. But how much spirit do you put uh, into what you know how to do, into what you like to do, into what you have chosen to do? Uh, because the more uh, energy you put into that, the more your body will respond to it. Because sometimes when you don't like a thing, the, your body also responds negatively to it. But when you like a thing and you're, you're very, very um, uh, serious about it, your body also responds uh, to that as well. So when you do that, your body uh, lives up to the task and then you will be more efficient in putting those your talents to use and producing whatever you need to produce. So you have the talent given that, you know, everybody does have the talent just like the good book says, uh, people were given talents, five talents, two talents, three talents and all that and the one who put uh, their talents to use are the ones who had a greater reward. So. When you want to put your talent to use, you have to inject a lot of energy into it. And energy comes when you tell yourself in your subconscious that you love what you're doing and you're doing it for a purpose. You have a purpose while you're doing that. Your body will also respond to it and then you'll produce wonderful results. Okay, Tony Robbins, thank you for that quote for the day. We're hoping that as it, it is a midweek, whatever you have failed to do on Monday and Tuesday, you are going to return to the ginger spirit to make sure that the week ends on a very good footing. We're moving straight to uh, top trending issues. The NLC accuses the federal government of harassing its leaders after the police summoned President Joe Ajayro over serious allegations including terrorism financing. 
An emergency neck meeting condemned the summons as politically motivated and an attempt to weaken the labor movement. The NLC agreed to honor the police investigation but demanded more time and warned the government to stop its actions against labor leaders. The NLC threatened the nationwide strike starting at midnight if a gyro <coughs> or any other leader is detained, urging civil societies to support their cause. Okay, I, I did see a story uh, on one of the papers that said that Ajairo didn't even uh, honor that invitation. But uh, I think he should have honored the invitation anyway. Uh, let's hear what the allegations will be against him. But if he did not honor that inv in invitation and uh, the police really has cause to uh, invite him, uh, let, let, let them go ahead and do what they're supposed to do. But the timing is everything. Life generally is about timing. Uh, you want to cross the road is timing, you want to go to school is timing, you want to do anything is timing, even to eat is timing. Uh, the timing of the police, after they went into the NLC uh, compound and uh, the word used by NLC was raided the compound and NLC uh, raised some dust, NLC has been fighting for a lot of other things and then suddenly the police just finds their president culpable. Uh, of uh, one or two things and they're talking about terrorism financing and Nigerians are asking the question we've always heard that there's a list of people who have been financing terrorism all this while they tell us and uh, when we open our mouth to say something Nigeria will burn they have never opened their mouth to say anything they have told us that the, the intelligence available to them is such that uh, a lot of high-ranking people are culpable we've seen some people who have harbored um, criminals in the past, uh, some people who we know that are uh, whining and dining with criminals in the past, they are, at, they are having top uh, federal appointments uh, th this time and no, no arrest has been made, uh, no invitation has been made, at least as far as Nigerians are concerned. We've never seen that list of people who are sabotaging the economy, which they say they, say they have. We've not seen those people who are financing terrorism, which they say they have, until uh, NLC uh, began to picket some offices in the country. NLC began to uh, threaten strike. NLC began to raise dust on a lot of issues that they feel uncomfortable with. And then the police suddenly finds a terrorism financier in the president of uh, NLC. I'm not saying he's, he doesn't do that, but sometimes the timing is terrible uh, when you're doing anything. If you have to do it, be sure that your evidences are concrete. It's, it's, it's not just frivolous uh, wishes or frivolous thinking uh, that this person might be. If you have solid evidence, the timing is always right. But if you don't have evidence and you're just inviting somebody and harassing the person, as now the, the word that has been used is harassing the, the chieftains of NLC because right now they have a reason to say it is because of XYZ that this is happening. Nigerian police, you need to sit up and do your work well. If you find, like I said, that there is concrete evidence against any of the NLC leaders or the president himself or anybody else, use that evidence and do the needful. Nigerians will be on your side. But if you just want to do because you have the power to do whatever you want to do, then Nigerians will continue not to trust you. And that is really bad. Insecurity will never go if the people do not trust the security agencies of our country. The second top trending issue as far as we are concerned this morning is the federal government has established a 10-member interministerial committee to enforce the Supreme Court's July 11, 2024 judgment granting financial autonomy to local governments in Nigeria. The committee chaired by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Senator George Akume, includes key members like the Minister of Finance, Attorney General, and representatives from the CBN, state governors, and local governments. The committee's main objective is to ensure local governments operate independently, free from state government interference. This initiative aligns with President Bola Tinubu's commitment to fully implement constitutional provisions, recognizing local government as a third tier of government. Uh, I like this development. I'm just wondering why um, whatever is in the Constitution is not enough to give a, a roadmap, a template on how uh, the local government is, is supposed to operate without the, being attached to the apron strings of uh, the state government and all that, that we need to, needed to set up a committee anyway. But if that is what it takes, 
for it to smoothly take off. I think that is a very laudable thing. We hope that um, whatever their findings are going to be will be as fast as possible and then the civil servants can't wait to begin to collect their money. So far, some states have agreed to pay, others are still silent about it. Some states have even set up their own local committees to make sure uh, that the interaction is seamless and the transition rather also is seamless into the autonomy of local government. On, on paper, the local government has always been autonomous, but um, it was the, the experience in the past that uh, led to whatever um, became of local government where they had joint accounts with the state governors uh, or government rather and the state government was uh, doling out as much as they wanted to the local government chairman. They now became like you know um, some heads of uh, departments that needed in the, uh, what do they call it um, needed some money to run the office uh, on a monthly basis. So that's what they were doing. So sometimes a local government will get, let's say, 10 million naira for the month, and then the, the governor is saying, OK, you know what, chairman of this local government, take 1 million or 2 million. What can you possibly do with that? Are you buying stationery with 1 million? Are you, what are you doing? You can't do a road. You can't build a bridge. You can't uh, build a market. You can't do all the th primary health care. You can't do, you can't pay uh, staff of the local government and all that. So everybody, every responsibility was taken by the state ostensibly to make sure that there is a, a transparency. But we didn't see that transparency uh, as much as we wanted it. We hope that this committee will do uh, whatever they need to do fast enough and then it will kick off and the local government will start to show working uh, uh, in all the roles that they're supposed to play in their particular local governments. I hope that this committee will also recommend that a local government chairman has to stay in his local government area. Yeah, because I like that as well. They have not done that for the federal lawmakers. I wish that they could do that as well for all lawmaker, lawmakers that you have to spend a particular number of days in your constituency uh, before uh, you can be called a, a, a senator, a House of Reps member or something. Some of them don't know their constituency. They stay in Abuja all the time. And local government chairman as well. If, for instance, uh, there's a local government chairman in uh, Ogoja local government in Cross River State, he stays in Calabar. If there is a local government chairman in uh, Adikbo in Benway State, he stays in Makurdi. And that's what they do. Uh, that is, those are the ones that are even good enough that are staying within their state. Some of them go to Abuja and stay, but they are local government chairmen and come collect their locations that, or whatever money that is supposed to be sent to them, and then they just enjoy themselves. So the committee does look at this, and we want our chairmen to be where they should be, our councillors to be where they should be, and everybody who is supposed to superintend over any um, geographical location should be able to stay there and have its impact felt in that locality. Okay, the final top trending issue is that um, the federal government's um, committee has reached an agreement with Dangote Petroleum Refinery to begin the rollout of premium motor spirit, that is petrol, in September 2024. Starting October 1, 2024, the sale of crude oil to Dangote Refinery and other local refineries will be conducted in Naira as part of strategy to stabilize fuel prices and the Naira dollar exchange rate. The federal government emphasized transparency and di directed a technical subcommittee to finalize details of the implementation of this initiative, with updates on significant production increases expected from November 2024. The Ariwa Consultative Forum, ACF, has expressed support for Dangote Refinery amidst ongoing controversies praising the facility as a source of national pride and commending Aliko Dangote's vision and patriotism okay so this is very uh, i don't know it's controversial or it's confusing on the one hand the federal government has directed that uh, crude be sold in naira and one of our uh, hot topics this morning is talking about the fact that the marketers are saying that they they, they are not comfortable with that they are not going to agree to the directive to sell crude in Naira to Dangote and any other refinery. And I'm just asking myself, why will this be happening? So your refinery is in Nigeria. The government refinery, even though they're not working right now, and other modular refineries that need crude oil, they are within Nigeria. And then we will buy 
in Nigeria and pay with dollars. I, I don't know how that works. I don't know what the government is going to do about that. But it doesn't speak well about a country that prides itself as a sovereign nation where the, 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 the legal tender for anything as important as crude oil, which we are producing ourselves, will be sold in dollars. So what will be the marked difference if we're still buying in dollars? It will be like importing from every other place, which means a lot of Nigerians are thinking that maybe this is to just, like I'm saying, uh, what's the point? What's the point in buying from Nigeria if I have to pay uh, a dollar for every, in dollars, for every crude oil that I get. Sometimes you might even get it from America at a cheaper rate, and then you're paying with the same dollar, and then you're buying in Nigeria, it is just like you're buying in America or buying anywhere else, or even, even worse than when you're buying from somewhere else. So uh, maybe they want to be frustrated out of uh, thinking about buying crude oil from Nigeria. We should never be. And as a layman, I was asking myself, when the bidding for the oil wells were made, were, 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 were thrown open, why didn't um, provision, why wasn't provision made for local refineries to have an easier hand to bid for those oil wells so that they can mine, as it were, their own oil and then use it for their refineries? I, I was just thinking aloud. I don't know how those things work. I don't, I'm not working in that, in that field. But I would have expected that if we have so many oil fields, uh, some of them will be dedicated to um, feeding the, the refineries back home in Nigeria. Like I said, I don't know how that works, but everybody who is a layman who doesn't understand will always be thinking why, why this is happening, why it has to be that you will transport the, the crude oil to America and somebody buys it from there and comes back here, or we go to America where maybe they do not even have as much crude as we do. But they've had a system where they could store this as much as possible, and then we are going to be the ones to be buying from America. It's ridiculous, really, really ridiculous uh, in this country. I hope that something will be done about it, and the president will put his foot down and say this has to be done, or look for an alternative to make sure it is easy for the people who have refineries in Nigeria. And those people who are intending to have refineries in Nigeria like we always kneel down to pray, uh, most times you say, Lord, do not let my enemies laugh over me because I trust in you. So let not Dangote or any other person who uh, wishes to establish a, a refinery, uh, let's use that today, uh, not be laughed at. Let, let his people who told him, like Dangote said, his friends told him not to establish a, a humongous uh, business like that in Nigeria. And now they might be the ones having the last laugh. So let that never happen to any Nigerian, not just Dangote. Yes, we might have our own problems with Dangote, but it doesn't stop the fact that Dangote meal is a game changer in Nigeria. And I'm not talking about Dangote because it is Dangote. I'm talking about Dangote because he's a Nigerian. And then other Nigerians are looking to see how successful that will be so that they too can do the needful, establish businesses here knowing that they will thrive. Well, let's hope for the best in the coming days. For now, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers and what the headlines are. Stay with us. <laughs>